operator, I'm calling Chicago. Dearborn 2, 4682. My number is main 6, 9913. Thank you. This is Ray Miller. Look, Bob, on that Donaldson order. They've got the specifications all wrong. It's really amazing how fast that call went through. Mr. Miller had a lot on his mind, so perhaps he didn't notice it. But some people have noticed that their calls are being completed more quickly than ever these days. One reason for it is operator toll dialing, a new method of speeding speech now being introduced in city after city throughout the Bell system. Such operator dialing can be done with a familiar telephone dial or, as in this office, with a key set, which is faster. These operators are using equipment which improves the service and reduces the time in which the average long-distance call goes through. Let's watch how the operator handled Mr. Miller's call. Long distance. Operator, I'm calling Chicago. Dearborn 2, 4682. My number is main six nine nine one three. Thank you. After writing down the two numbers on a ticket record, looking up the route to Chicago, and plugging into a trunk or pathway to the equipment, the operator depresses the proper keys to advance the call. Each key gives part of the information needed. From there on, the new equipment takes over and promptly advances the call right through to ringing the distant telephone directly. That's all there is to it. When her signal light shows that the call party is answered, the operator stamps the time on the ticket. For a comparison, let's suppose that you're making a toll call between two cities with no direct lines connecting them, and the call is handled by one of the methods used before operator toll dialing. You reach the long distance operator in city A and give her the number of the call party. She probably calls in another operator in your own city and asks to be connected with city X, an intermediate point. When the girl there answers, your operator asks for a connection through to city B. But suppose this is the unusual case when all the lines to B are busy. Your operator then has to start all over again. She asks the other operator in your city for city Y, an alternate routing. When this connection is made, the girl in city Y puts the call through to city B. The operator in city B connects through to the number you called, rings it, and your party answers. Service by such methods has been developed to a high degree of efficiency, but operator toll dialing will make it even better. Now, if this call is handled by the new method, you begin the same way, by reaching your long distance operator and telling her the number you want. She brings in the automatic switching equipment serving your city and gives it the information by dialing or using her key set. Without further help, the new equipment selects a clear path to City X, discovers that no lines are available from X to B, goes right on to City Y, finds an available line to City B, and rings the telephone of the call party. Once the operator presses the proper keys, it happens, just like that, in less time than it takes to tell about it. Let's look at some of the ingenious devices which provide this improved service. These intricate switches are one of the types actually used to connect long distance calls. This key set in the test equipment is just like the ones the operators use. It is hooked up to a loudspeaker so we can hear what goes on behind the scenes. Each key has a combination of tones or notes of its own. 
When the operator plugs into a trunk, she is connected to a sender, such as this. By pressing her keys, she puts the tones into the sender. For example, on Mr. Miller's call to Chicago, the first three tones are the code for Chicago. The next three, the code for the office name, and the last four tones, the telephone number. The sender registers the tones and remembers them. Then it calls on another device, the marker. Telephone people call it the brain because of its complex nerve system. The marker picks up the first three tones, selects a clear path to the distant city, sets up the connection between that path and the long distance operator's position, and notifies the sender that everything is ready. Then the sender releases the rest of the information, sending the tones along to tell the equipment in the distant city how to complete the call. Here's a test panel which provides a visible record of all calls going through the equipment. If there's any trouble in handling a call, the marker immediately complains on the trouble indicator panel here. It calls for the doctor, so to speak. At the present time, long distance offices like the one you've seen can control existing mechanical equipment in many parts of the country. Further installations are now going forward. How does a development like this come about? A broad program of research and development covering all aspects of communication is constantly carried on in the Bell Telephone Laboratories. Over the years, scientists like these developed equipment which would be able, in a measure, to think, to make decisions by itself. They conceived and designed automatic switching and the use of tones for sending signals over long distances used in toll dialing. But new devices must be designed for mass production at low cost. That's why Bell Telephone Laboratories and the Western Electric Company, the manufacturer and supply member of the Bell System team, work hand in hand in designing and building for telephone service. The thousands of special parts needed for operator toll dialing are manufactured and assembled in various Western Electric plants, then put through rigid tests before being shipped. Their experts follow the equipment to the operating centers and carry out the complex job of installation. And just as it takes people to design and build ingenious new devices and to install them, it takes people to run them. More men with greater knowledge and skills are needed to maintain this new system. So, many telephone people are going back to school. And, of course, the operators have to be trained in using the new equipment. Today, more and more long-distance calls are being handled by operator toll dialing. And as this service is extended, the day draws nearer when long-distance calls will go through just like local calls. What is the effect of such improvements? As service becomes better, people use it more. And greater use means a steadily growing number of telephone people. Today, for example, there are about twice as many men and women in the bell system as there were 25 years ago. Operator toll dialing as a method of speeding speech is already an accomplished fact to the scientists of the bell system, even though it will take a great deal of time and money before all the needed equipment can be built, installed, and put into operation all over the country. What will the outcome of their present research be? How many uses will be found for it? Perhaps these men themselves cannot tell us the details now. But the final aim is clear. Their goal is the goal of all the men and women of the Bell system. The best possible service at the least possible cost. And that means a constantly improved and faster service for all of us.